All right, class, the last hydrogen atom video that we did, we were looking at the wave functions for the hydrogen atom, which we remember was the product of a radial wave function and our spherical harmonic that we learned back in Rigid Rotator. And we worked out this wave function that is shown on the screen, which is when n equals 2, l equals 1, and m equals 0. Or we might call this the 2pz orbital. And so for this wave function, I asked you to do a few things in between this, the first video and this video. One of those, the last very one of those, was to figure out what is the average distance of the electron from the nucleus, or what is the expectation value of R for the wave function psi210. So how would we go about setting this up? So if we were going to set this up, we're going to have a triple integral, because of course we're in spherical coordinates. We're going to integrate over phi from 0 to 2 pi, over theta from 0 to pi, and over r from 0 to infinity. And we're going to have our wave function complex conjugate, followed by our operator operating on our original wave function. Keep in mind that the operator for average position is just multiplied by position. And in this case, our position is r, or distance from the origin. And then remember that we have a little bit extra piece to our integrand here, right? We have this r squared sine theta bit that we have to include every time we integrate over spherical coordinates. So let's try this. So let's plug in our wave function. So if we think about combining our constants 1 over 2 square root of 6 and 3 over 4 pi square root and squaring them because they're going to come both from the complex conjugated wave function as well as the original wave function, we'll get 1 over 32 pi. And we'll also get 1 over a naught to the fifth. So these are all right here, our constants, right? Okay. So then we have our radial function, r times the exponential coming from the complex conjugate. None of this gets changed by complex conjugating this particular wave function because there's no imaginary component. Then we get a cosine theta from the complex conjugate. R is our operator. And then we get our original wave function. And then we, of course, have our integrand r squared sine theta dr d theta d phi. So let's pull all our constants out front and start combining like terms. So we can pull out 1 over 32 pi and 1 over a naught to the fifth. We'll write our integral. We can combine our r's. Notice that we have r times r times r times r squared, or r to the fifth. And then we have our exponential, e to the minus r over a naught. And then we can combine our cosines and get cosine squared theta, sine theta, and then what remains of our integrand is dr d theta d phi. So let's first start with this integral over r, because mathematicians tell us, right, work from the inside out. So if we start with r, we're going to get our integral from 0 to infinity of r to the fifth e to the minus r over a naught dr, according to integral tables, is simply 5 factorial over 1 over a naught to the sixth, or 120 a naught to the sixth. So let's plug that in where we have this integral. Since it's a constant, we'll go ahead and pull it all the way out front and combine it with our other constants. And when we do that, 120 over 32 pi is going to simplify to 15 over 4 pi, and our a naught to the 6 divided by a naught to the 5th is going to simplify to just a naught. So then we still have our integral here over theta and phi. Let's next work with our theta integral. And so our theta integral, cosine squared theta sine theta d theta, turns out to be equal to negative one-third cosine cubed theta before we plug in any bounds. So let's go ahead and substitute that in there and start plugging in bounds. Remember, our bounds are 0 to pi. And so when we plug in cosine of pi, we're going to get negative 1. And negative 1 cubed is still negative 1. And when we plug in cosine of 0, that's positive 1. And positive 1 cubed is still positive 1. And so we're going to get negative 1 third times 1 third times minus 1 minus 1, or 2 thirds total. And so we get are, if we pull that all the way up front, combine it with our other constants, this will simplify to 5a0 over 2 pi. And then we still have to deal with our integral over theta, which is simply integrate d theta from 0 to 2 pi, which turns out to just equal 2 pi. And so when we simplify this, we get the average value of r, the average distance 
of the electron from the nucleus is 5 a naught or 5 times the Bohr radius, which is a very, very small number, but so are atoms.